From near-death experiences to the devastation of homelessness, how and where do we find the will to overcome insurmountable odds? And when we do overcome these challenges, how do we pass that story of survival on to others? Life on the Rocks is that place where these stories are heard from those who live to tell them. And now, here is your host, Kyle Miller. Welcome back to Life on the Rocks. Guys, I'm so excited to share my guest today. This guy, we actually, uh, we went to high school together, graduated the same class. But this guy is out here killing it. I love his story. I'm here to share with it with you today. And so let's just get into it. Brought us Palmer, man. What's up? What's up, Cal, man? I appreciate you having me here, brother. Seriously, man. Dude, right. I've seen I've seen your journey. Like, I, I've seen it. I, I, I've, I've had conversations with you, man. And I've just been so like stoked to like see you just level up, level up, level up. And I, that, that word's going to come in a little bit later, but I, I'm just stoked, bro. So tell us who, who brought us is like where he started and then like lead us into the journey of what you're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. So brought us Palmer native of small town, Palmyra, Virginia. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, grew up in a rural area where everyone knows everyone. Yep. And just like a regular teenager, I try to be cool. And, and unfortunately, my friends that I wanted to hang out with didn't value the education of school, right? So, but I did graduate, you know, and I made it out alive, but it's the, the, the skin of my teeth, right? Right. But yeah, looking at what I wanted to do in my life, I mean, it was a lot of things. So like, I wanted to be a musician, you know, mm-hmm. I was a rapper and singer, so I was putting some focus and time on doing that because because that's what, you know, you couldn't tell me that's what I wasn't going to be, you know, when right. I was 17 or 18. But going through uh, the journey of uh, being in music gave me the ability to connect with people and really focus on, I think it was building me to solve problems because literally I was taking songs and we were writing them based on the experiences that we collaborated with other people in our life, whether it's fans that like our music, family that support it, or even our own experiences. And then moving from that, you know, I got into banking, really focused on at that time, it was like payday loan lending. So it wasn't actually banking. It was the finance industry. But, you know, looking at what the payday loan industry did to the working class, uh, I wasn't typically for that movement at the time, right? Where, and, what, where, and and some people don't know what what is that? What does that do? Some people, what, yeah. What is, so you're talking about predatory lending, I call it, where you have you yeah. know people will come at that time doing payday lending. You have people borrow money, and they were able to pay it back and reborrow the same day, right? So think uh-huh. about somebody who borrows five hundred dollars. And come back and has to pay one hundred and thirty six dollars the next week or the next two weeks, and then have to borrow that money back because that was their whole paycheck. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're talking about like a hundred and something, three hundred, three hundred twenty nine percent annual percentage interest rate. Right. Where you know they're spending for borrowing a thousand dollars, they're spending every month almost three hundred dollars to borrow that thousand dollars. So five hundred every two weeks. But right. What it, I guess, what it built me to do is, or built me to see is understanding, you know, the changes that needed to be made over time. Where people, there's so many other opportunities where people were working and they were working for little or nothing, and then this company comes in and said we can help, but they weren't weren't really helping. You see what I'm right. saying? They were just making yeah. money, and everybody's in business to make money, right? But you you want to help people progress. And yes. this wasn't a level of progression that I wanted to see, right? Uh-huh. So moving out of that, I actually got into the banking industry. And once again, it was just molded me to solve problems for different people. So you, you never know who will walk through the door and what type of problem they will have. Uh-huh. Or you never know who walked through the door and understand that they didn't even know they had a problem that you had right. to figure out and solve. Right. And through that time, it just helped me be better and better with communicating with people, gotcha. listening to each story, solving a problem. And at that time, too, I was still trying to find myself as an entrepreneur. So moving from music, we were going to more clothing design because we were selling a lot of merch and music. 
So mm-hmm. we was like, you know, why not move over to that to designing clothes? Because the music at the time, well, people, if you're a musician out here, you know, or if you want to be a musician, you got to understand it's a business itself. Right. So if you don't have the money, you're not going to go anywhere. This The days are long gone of sending a demo in to somebody to listen to at a label and they say, we want to sign this person. They want to gotcha. actually see if you can make money, you know, gotcha. so... So trying my hand at clothing design, and once again, it was building my strength up with dealing with people, right? Figuring yeah. out all types of people, what they like, how can we market to them? How can we hit the pain points with merchandise that we had that mm-hmm. really share a story that connected with them that made them want to buy from us? Right. And in turn, I took that back to work to really be good at what I did in banking to connect Something like if a person comes in with a debit card, talk to them about what's going on in their life now. Just a regular conversation. So they might say, you know, I got a daughter. She's about to go to college. And, you know, we're trying to figure out what to do there. That's a problem that needs to be solved because now we could talk about what type of options can we offer to help that person send their, their daughter off to college? What type of credit options do they utilize now? Or even have they even thought about like pulling equity from their home? Yeah. To be able to have a line of credit to send their daughter off to college. But moving from clothing, because I was still trying to find my way as an entrepreneur, I got right. into sneaker reselling. So the sneaker industry is a huge market where, you know, we can literally buy the most sought out the sneakers okay. for retail and turn around and sell them for a thousand percent profit. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it was one of those things where I can literally buy a hundred dollar pair of shoes right now and it can be fifteen hundred dollars five minutes after they release. And, you know, that was one of the things that really struck an entrepreneur nerve where I wanted to drive a huge business. I, yeah. you know, I had I was building a lot of clientele online. Mm-hmm. And I had an Instagram that was had a severe, uh, not severe, a major amount of growth with about 70,000 followers. And we were just doing great business. We had, you know, some B-list celebrities, not A-list, but B-list celebrities that were still yeah. in business with us at the time. So uh, I wanted to focus on bringing growth and bringing an experience with the brick and mortar as well. Yeah. And we ended up putting our eggs, well, not us. I ended up putting our eggs in one basket where we had this connection for sneakers that was getting everything we needed because they worked at a Jordan store in Chicago. So that person would literally drop ship. So we would just purchase the shoe at retail, well, a little bit over retail so they could make a little bit of money. But they would literally send the sneakers out to our customers. We didn't have the box. We didn't have the package, anything. (laughs) Until it was a two-year working relationship that was scaling massively. And then one year in October, Drake had a collab with Jordan for these. It's called the Jordan 12 OVO. October very own uh-huh. Jordans. And these Jordans were like the hottest thing that was hitting the market. And we sunk with those shoes and other shoes that were coming out. We sunk like 50 grand into this deal. And sneakers. And sneakers, right? Uh-huh. Only to have this connection, take our money and run. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, you know, we talking about $50,000. I sent it into one of the most unprotected ways possible. You know, sending it through, at that time, it was Google Pay. Uh-huh. Right? Clients looking at, where's my sneakers? Where's my sneakers? Oh, man. You know, I mean, you talking so many clients. I can't even I can't even fathom how, you know how much money we owe. <laughs> so this was one of the worst points in my life because you got to think man like it was right before Christmas so not right. only people who trusted in us wasn't able to get their product right we didn't have any money for them but we didn't I didn't have any money for my family either. Right. You know it's Christmas and my wife looking at me like what are we going to do? <laughs> and I'm like, we don't have n- money for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it took a lot of grinding 
over time. It, it took me, to be honest with you, about six months to a year to pay most of those people back out of my pocket. And it took almost that case. They were very generous because I believe after six months, it's like a statute of limitation on right disputes, right? So, so you got sued. So no, I I didn't get sued. Oh, I tried okay. to dispute okay. because I didn't get product. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So we didn't send it in a, a, a protected way. So what I had to do is build my story through text messages, through emails, through yeah. pictures, everything. This person said they sent my stuff, showing them the tracking where it ended up. So it took almost a year, but we ended up getting that money back. Oh, wow. So that was like, and, and, and when I say this, y'all don't think I'm crazy, but you're talking about a person every day for six months that was on their knees in the bathroom praying to God that something is going to break through that we can get this money back for our people. Cause wow. you got to think it was in the, in, in the bad, you know, I was in a bad way. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, I mean, you're, yeah, you're a small business. You're, I mean, essentially you're a small business trying to like grow sales and do it. And then just somebody took your whole bag. And, took the whole and, bag. The relationship was great for two years. So it was like, no brainer. He's going to get everything we need. 50 K bro. Let's do it. Right. You know, excited. And right. It didn't come through, and uh, God. we 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 got out of that. And I promised myself I was like, I'm never gonna be an entrepreneur again. Yeah, I'm not. I'm never gonna put myself down. So while I'm in banking, you know, I I got a job locally here at uh, what's called Branch Banking and Trust BBT, right? Mm-hmm. So looking at uh, these two engineers used to come in and they used to, you know, come and get cash. And I started seeing like the direct deposits. And, and at that time, the direct deposits was like 4,000 every two weeks. And I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, just curious, because I always interested. Like, hey, what do y'all do? And he was like, yeah, we're in tech. It's mm-hmm. like, so you, you got it off? He's like, no, no, no. I work on, uh, you know, at the time he was like, I work on Central Plains Road. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, so you work on like at home? He was like, yeah. So I'm like, what type of internet you have? He was like, yeah, we got CenturyLink. So I'm like, you working on bullshit internet? Yeah. At home in the rural area, and you making you bringing home eight k a month? Yeah. So that's when I started thinking about like tech because I was like, I'm trying to see how I can do this. And right. one day, I'm not gonna lie. So one day a customer came in, and they were talking to me about their account. Something that they've done, but they wanted to release that anger on me. And that person was like, yeah, Broadus, what you need to do is look at my account and see how much money I have. And that's the type of service I expect from you all day, every day. And I'm like, I give, you know, at that point, I'm like, I give people the the top tier service regardless of what they have. So at that moment, my mind was like, I'm not going to do this no more. You know, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't do banking. It's nothing wrong with banking, but I was like, I wanted more. And my mind said, you're going to get into tech. And right. I was like, well, what the hell am I going to do in tech? Cause I don't know nothing. <laughs> so it's this long journey, not long journey, but long, it seemed like a long journey of thinking like, what can I do and how can I do it? So mm-hmm. talking to a thousand different people, they still took me a thousand different directions. And I was right. still confused about what I could do in tech and how yeah. I should do it. But one thing I did know is I stumbled across this technology called cloud computing technology. Okay. And from my research, it was like the companies that were using it didn't have enough people who understood it. So they were paying top tier money for people who did. And then it was a side of people who said they didn't want to adopt cloud technology at all. Right. But, for me, building business, using you know, doing music and looking at how we served our people online, mm-hmm. I knew. I said, "Well, eventually, everybody's going to have to use some form of cloud computing uh-huh. in the future, regardless of how they feel about it." Like right. this thing. I mean, you're using it now with Facebook. We're using it now with Instagram. We, you know, yeah. these are applications that are built for cloud yeah. virtual use. Right. Right. When we say yeah. cloud, we just mean virtual. Okay. Right. Okay. So I uh ended up looking at how I can get into the industry. And um 10 months later, man, I landed 
just to give a little background for people, I was making about $42,000 at the bank. At the bank? And my first tech role was a six-figure role, period. So it literally changed my life from there. Man. You know what I'm saying? So that's where where I thought I would never be an entrepreneur again. And, and excuse me, Cal, look, man, if you got questions, ask me. Ask no, me, man, I'm, I'm just loving this. I'm right, loving this cool. story so, because I, I didn't know a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I, I just, I, I didn't know the 50 K lost and, and like all of this happening. And, um, I just think it's so cool, man. I, I just, I just think it's, it's awesome how each role right now has been building and building to what you're doing right now. Yeah. And how you're able to like, just help people. And so I, I'm just seeing this progression of how it's all working out. And I think it's awesome. Yeah. I believe like all the things I've been through professionally and like as an entrepreneur prepare me for what I'm doing now. Yeah. Right. So, you know, when I get, when I got into the industry, got my first tech job, which, which it was a cloud role. Right. I had so many people. So we'll wind this back while I was doing this, when I was on my journey learning, I decided I was going to share my journey on LinkedIn. It was a platform okay. I knew nothing about, but I knew it was a professional platform that I somehow should take advantage of by sharing my story and using it in a way that I would use Instagram or Facebook. You just like say, I don't know anything about this, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. I, so one thing I did know was my marketing tactics for like sneakers and music. Uh-huh worked on Facebook and Instagram. Right. So I was like, what if I put those marketing tactics over here to help me land a job? Okay. Right. Build my yeah. personal brand. So build it to a point where for me, I didn't want to continue to go to hundreds of jobs applying. What I wanted to do is have jobs come to me. Uh huh. So how could I do that? And I Dude. did that by, building myself online and showing my journey, like showing what I was learning, showing uh-huh. what I was building and being a, a, a ambassador for people that was just like me. So I was like, it's people, even though I'm in the beginning stages, it's people that's just like me right now or behind me. That's going to need direction. Right. So how did you not feel like need direction? How did you not feel like you were some, like, not like an imposter or something like you're just going through this beginning stages and you're sharing your journey I'm sure there's people that have been through there or like, how did, how were you able to have the confidence to share that because you were brand new? So that's one thing that I've always been good at, right? Where imposter syndrome is real. Let's keep that hundred percent honest, right? Right. But in my mind, the way it works is I'm a person that always like to prove wrong, people wrong or even like the thoughts of fear. Mm-hmm. I'm always like, mm, I'm going to do it. Regardless right. of how I feel. Right. Because I one thing I did realize was how I felt had nothing to do with my success. <laughs> what you know a what great saying? how you felt. That is it's so true. Yeah. So it's, like you can feel any way about yourself, regardless of what you're doing. You can feel like, oh my God, if I spend this money, I'm not gonna get it back. But that's just fear giving you the worst case scenario. And as you know, Kyle, fear kills more dreams than failure ever would. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that was one thing that I wasn't going to let happen because something had to change from banking for me getting into this industry because I needed something that I can be, you know, have a stable financial future for my family. And that's all I was thinking about. Yeah. You know, so... um. Moving into that, I wanted to share my journey. And as I shared it more, more people start coming to me, especially when I got into the industry and they seen that I did it. More people started coming to me asking for help. And these were not people that were just like me. What made it crazy for me was it was people who were in the the tech industry already. 20 years of experience as a system engineer, 15 years as a networking engineer. And I'm like, that's when the imposter syndrome started kicking in because I was like, what can I do for you? Like, you've been here for 20 years. Shouldn't you be teaching me? Right, right. But one thing I realized is after looking at data, you know, kind of compiling things and looking at why these people connected with me. When it came to cloud technology, it was something new in the tech field or the tech okay. industry that people didn't adopt. So now companies want to use it they spent 20 years doing something else. They really have to go back to square one. 
and right. learn everything over again because they didn't continue learning in their job and their role. Wow. So when they seen that, I start helping people. I started doing stuff pro bono mm-hmm. and it just got overwhelming where damn near spending eight hours a day just helping people for free. <laughs> and I was like, my time is super valuable. So right. I'm going right. to have to create some type of program that's going to help people do exactly what I did. So I just took my journey and I patented it into a program. Really? And yeah. So like I took exactly what I did and created a program and called it at that time, it was a level up with Broadus. Right. So I got me a coach to try to figure out how to build my business from scratch and kind of automate it. And oh, wait, I, wait, wait. Yeah, You're starting to be an entrepreneur again? Yeah. So I started <laughs> trying to be an entrepreneur because I'm like, I can't, you know, I value my time. And I'm like, the way I can, I see, I see a problem that needs to be solved. Right. And people are coming to me for that problem. So yeah. either I'm going to shoo them away and let somebody else make this cash or I'm going to make this cash, one or the other. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I started this small program where six months of help. So let's let's talk about this mindset after I say this. Okay. Pro, six month program I created. My first customer, right? Do you yeah. know how much I charged them? No, how much? $149. <laughs> 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 Six months, hundred forty nine dollars. That's it, man. I love I was it. So scared that nobody would pay me what I thought it was worth. Right? What do you, you think it was worth? Thousands. Right. You right. I mean? So, you know, and I said one hundred forty nine dollars, and my coach was like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> he was like, "Let me." T-, at that time, he was like, "Let me tell you something. If you don't believe you can get it, you you won't get it." Wow. And he was like, you have to believe first that you're worth. And he was like, you got to understand people who say no, like your your product is not for everybody. Yeah. And people who say no or don't want to spend that much for your product are not your customers right now. Yeah. So I took that and I started to charge a little more. <laughs> I started to go to like 500, you know what I mean? <laughs> then I started doing a thousand. But one thing I started to see was how fast people were still saying yes. Yeah. They could see the value in it. You couldn't. Yeah, Right. So this is the thing. For entrepreneurs out there, if you're throwing out prices and they immediately say yes, yeah, it's great. However, you got to think you may be charging too low. Yeah. Because <laughs> if they if they saying yes that quick, that means they, they know it's a great deal and they're going to hop on top. So right. you want to make sure, hey, you know, am I undervaluing myself and what I can do. So that's what I had to think of. And I had to think of business another way where what would happen if somebody large wanted to invest in level up with broadest? Or what if, what if I built this and somebody wanted to come and acquire what we're doing? Right. So you're already thinking this. You're already yeah. So when I do something, I try to think of the long term, like not too long. Like I don't, I'm not a ten year planner, right? Some people are, right? right? But I'm yeah. like at least a two years. Let's see, right. you know, what are we doing? And I knew that if somebody come and say, "Hey, you're doing absolutely well. Your business is doing these numbers. We want to give you a five x return on buying." You know, if my business, yeah. you know, let's say my business is doing three million, they want to do fifteen. You know, right. Right. To buy me up, then they're probably not going to do it because it's called Level Up with Broadus. Right. It's got yeah, you me. in the thing. You can't sell you. Yeah, I can't sell me. So for another thing for entrepreneurs that are out there, if your business is determined on you doing the work, yeah. like if you can't step away from your business and have it run, yeah. It, no matter how much money you make, and you may say I'm wrong, no matter how much money you make, it's absolutely worthless. Yep, you can't sell it. Because you can't sell it. So if somebody came and said, we want to, we were thinking about investing a hundred million dollars in a company and we like you, and they look at what you're doing and your process, your flow, and if you got to be working in that business in order for that business to make money, they wouldn't, you wouldn't get a dime. Yep. So I was thinking that like, well, my name is attached to it. So literally they would have to strip the name and rebrand it. And nobody's going to do that. Right. You know, now you're not going to spend money on a perfectly running, great looking car and strip it all to hell and just rebuild it. 
Yeah. What's the point of buying the car? Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's when we came up with the name Level Up in Tech because okay. we want to corporatize it and have that that brand from there. And one of those things, and I think in the middle of this journey, I had to learn was, and I think it's going to come a time for some entrepreneurs. When I started looking at how much I was worth as far as the value and how much the program was worth, and I started charging what I thought, the next month I was getting like 20 people a month. And that first month I got 20 people. At that time I was charging, I think maybe $3,000 for our services. Okay. So think about that, right? We are like, yo, hold up. We, we, we got the potential to do 50, 60 this month. Right. That's like, that's too much. That's crazy. Cause I ain't never did this before. And this right. is the point. I believe where people fail or they grow through and be successful because some people will tell you right now, no, 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 let's give it. That's too many people. I want to handle like maybe one or two or three people to get my feet wet. We see the thing is people are scared because me, I knew if I had accepted, if I accept that money and have all those people sign that contract and have those 20 people start, which I did. Yeah. Then I have to deliver on what I said I was going to deliver on. Right. Period. Right. And I think that scares more people than ever from being successful because now they have to make sure their delivery model is giving the experience that they told the customers that they was going to give them. Right. And some people are just sellers and they haven't built their business to understand how it works. So they're out here selling. Now, when you got these customers saying, yeah, I believe you. Now I you got, you. oh shit, I got to, I got to build this <laughs> thing. Oh my God. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. No, so, it's a real thing. I hope a lot of people are out make sense though. Yeah. Everybody, a lot of people out there can sell and sell and sell, but then when it comes time to deliver, you know, it's different. So I, in, in the real estate world, kind of like where I, I deal in a lot is that we have people are out there acquiring, acquiring, acquiring massive uh, apartment complexes and, and properties and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's great. That's one aspect of the game. Right. Now here here comes the hard part. The hard part is actually delivering on that stuff. Actually being an operator and getting it done and having right. the systems and programs to get that stuff across the finish line. That that's where it separates, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, so, and that, I think that's the most important thing for any entrepreneur. What is your process? Yeah. For a lot of y'all got process right now that you don't even know. Like yeah. I was helping a couple people last week and they were trying to build something. I'm like, what is your process? They were like, I don't know. So I'm like, let's break it down. Like if I paid you right now, yeah, what is the first thing you're going to do? And they was yeah. like, well, we're going to do this and that. I'm like, okay, so that's step one. Label that as step one. And then mm-hmm. we went down to all the way to like number six. And I'm like, so you got a six step process yeah, where you help people do, do this or go from here to here. Right. Or go from out of shape to in fit, you know? So right now let's see what that delivery model looks like. And I had to start thinking that way quickly, but with the great coaches I had and, you know, once I start scaling up and, you know, we were doing 50, 60, and then we would start hitting our hundred K months, man. It was like, I ain't never thought I was going to be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it, it required, a different level of thinking. Yeah. You know, it was it required a different level of thinking that I didn't have the capacity to think about. So like I didn't know, like I wanted to build a seven figure business and I I didn't know how to consistently hit our numbers so we can do that. So it's gonna come a time where and it's this this is always the motto in the industry. If your coaches don't have coaches, then yeah. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing? They're not learning anything new. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? So as a coach, if I'm sitting and telling people to invest their money and time into being coached by us, I need to have a coach 24-7 all the time. Well, I think the education, whether it be from a college, whether it be from where, wherever you get the education is, right? But education, I think a lot of people, whether they went to college or whether they went, they stopped at high school, a lot of people end at that level. So, hey, well, I've got to co- I'm going to go to college and then I'm going to, you know, after that I got a, a job and then I, I'm not increasing my knowledge after that. People out of high school, some right. of them have never, well, 
never go and try to learn more and more and more and more and more. Like I think with guys like you and guys like me and the guys that we hang out with and that we're always involved with and we're trying to be around all the time, we sit there and, make, and if you ask us, we don't know anything. And we're always trying to like, well, okay, I got to learn that. I got to learn that. I got to get better. I got to get better. I got to get better. And that's that constant drive in life that we have is just saying, I got to get better at this. I don't know everything. I need help. Right. I need to yeah. hire somebody. Show me what I need to do. And I think those are the guys that win long term. You know, the, the ones, there's a lot of people that stop and that's their choice, right? But, but the people that keep going and keep pushing and keep growing, those are the ones that you see at, at you know, 40, 50, and, and like they have everything that they wanted in their life is because they just kept learning and kept learning and kept implementing kept yep. and just and just kept working at it. It's not an overnight thing. No, you know, somebody no. sitting here right now listening to and you doing a hundred K a month is like, what? There's some people that, 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 that shocks them. I'm super like stoked. Like, that's awesome. I'm like, yes, you're doing it, you know? And, but some people can't, are, are can't even fathom it. Yeah. They can't, they can't, they don't believe it. Oh, right? They're like, how, how do you do that? Right. It, I was one of those people too, though. So mm-hmm. like when I started level up with Broadus. I was literally just thinking of like, how can I make like a thousand dollars this month? Right. Like maybe I can get ten people one hundred and forty nine dollars, and I'll be at fifteen hundred <laughs> for a month. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and I think to your point, where you talk about people who want to continuously learn and people who stop, I right. actually think it's three levels too. Right. So like, you have those people who stop learning. You have those people who want to continuously learn and they're, they're learning, right? By researching and everything. But then you have those people like me and you who say, I need to invest in my learning because I want to take someone and value them who has spent years learning something that they can teach me how to do in months. Yep. Absolutely. I I value my time. Absolutely. I value my time. So I want to, hit my goals and I can see, you know, how can somebody help me hit my goals? Well, I thought it could take five years to hit my goals in the next year and a half, even two. Right. Yeah. You know, so people don't understand it. If you want to go to that level, it costs money to invest in yourself to take. Well, that there it is. The next there level. it is. People pay, people will spend a hundred thousand dollars to go to college and they'll leave with a, a liberal arts degree and, and no really, you know, I, I don't even know what a liberal arts degree What does that do, before. right? Yeah, I don't know what a liberal arts <laughs> degree does. But then they can spend, and, and you know, we all have mentors where we spend 30 grand, 40 grand to go learn from these individuals who give us direct knowledge in the business that we're doing to make yep. more money. Yes. That investment, it's an investment. It's like a college is, but that investment, people think it's crazy that you would do that because it's not a norm. It's not what everybody does. Everybody's supposed to go to college. Everybody's supposed to get out and get a job. We don't think that way. Right. We invest in ourselves. And if if we're not investing that money, we're saying that we're not worth it, really. Exactly. So this is the thing. So I used to put that on the application. So when they come in and fill out an application for Level Up in Tech, it would say, yes, I'm ready to invest in myself at that level when yeah. they see the price. Or it yeah. says, no, I don't think I'm worth the investment. Yeah. Oh, because that's, that's what you're saying. Right? <laughs> that's that's what you're saying. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. that's it. Yeah. So, Figure it out. It's funny, man. And I, I think, you know, uh, people need to understand that, and I preach this all the time, that the difference in the distance between where you are now and where you want to be is your daily activities. Yes. What are you yes. doing daily? If you got a business, how are you focusing on your business daily to hit those goals? So literally take... If you can't think that far, a year. So take six months. Where you want to be in six months mm-hmm. in reverse engineer? What does it look like for you to hit that six months? And then you break it down to your daily steps because your daily steps is going to hit your weekly goals. Your weekly goals going to hit your monthly goals, and that monthly goal is the very important step to hit your six month goals. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what are you doing? Absolutely, man. You Dude, know? Love, I'm loving this. Yeah, I love man. This, I love this journey. Yeah, yeah, so, it, it's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but here just we like are. Everything else. Well, just like everything else in life, it's not this, it's not the Instagram life. And like some people think that the only way to make money is to be a musician. The only way to make money is to be 
a uh, actor or be right. on big screen and stuff right. like that. And I'll tell you, guys, there's more money being made in businesses right now than all of those actors put together. There's guys right. out there making millions and millions of dollars a year and you can't even you don't even know who they are. That's what I'm saying. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure with you, we we probably in the uh, mastermind. I'm in a mastermind now, you know, coaching group where these guys talking about, you know, 10 million, 15 yeah. million, 20 million stacked in the bank. Yeah. And or even at the rate we going, it still make me feel like a peasant. But I know <laughs> I know we'll get there. Right. It's all about it, learning. So it's coming right now. If you're working a job, let's say you're making 15 dollars an hour. It's nothing wrong with working. And making that amount of money, but if you want more, it literally takes action, yeah. and you don't even have to be all that smart. You know no. I, mean? <laughs> I mean, you just gotta take action. Anybody can make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Just take action yeah. and do what you're supposed to do. Yeah, like everybody is smart enough out there to make that, right? Yes. But you know, you want to get to a million dollars a year, learn more. Put more right. time in, you educate yourself, yep. and grow. But any like a hundred grand is easy. Yep. So just to reiterate, just to start, and yep. you want to build yourself up. Just take the action. You're going to learn things as you go, but yeah. it's going to get to a point where you're going to say, "I can't do this by myself." Yeah. And this is the point where I think some people fail and some people succeed because those who don't want to invest in the continuous learning end up plateauing, sales fall off, or their business dwindle. And the money stops coming in for those who say, you know what? I know. So you got to ask yourself, if you're making $10,000 a month, what is $2,000 a month to hire a coach that can help you make $30,000 a month right. or $40,000 a month? i tell you what it is. It's that lifestyle creep that they get up to 10000 a month. They're spending 9900 bucks a month and they got that 100 bucks because they got to get that <laughs> car. They got to go out to dinner. They got to, they got to. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, I mean, people are broke still making six figures a year because of lifestyle creep, right? They just allow it to happen. So if you're starting out as a business or or trying to uh, get things going, man, be frugal. You know, start making money, start making investments and start stacking cash. You know, don't go out and spend it on the Lambo or the Mercedes (laughs) or or the BMW, right? Just so you can look cool in front of your friends that don't have any money. That's no fun. Right. right, because that means you're still broke. And now, <laughs> to add what you're saying, listen to this, y'all. I'm, I hope y'all hear what Kyle's saying and listen to what I'm going to add on top of it. If you're doing that, you only add a more stress because you can't even enjoy the things that you bought. Yep. Because now you got to figure out how you're going to continue to make money to continue paying for it. Yep. You know, Dude. so stack so, your cash. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stack it. Uh, make good investments. Yeah, so for sure. You be- come from <laughs> aspiring musician, right, to selling uh, sneakers, which I didn't yep. know that you that there was that big of margins on the sneakers. <laughs> yeah, man. I learned something on that. To working at the bank, to cloud computing, to now owning Level Up in tech. So how many how many students right now are you helping like completely change their life? Yeah, so this year already we have 50 students that started from January to February. So you had 50 students in 38 days. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, how, ma- how many do you expect to help this year? We had a goal of about 200 to 250. Okay. However, we're going to see that probably <laughs> in a quarter and a half, maybe. Okay. A quarter in a month. So. Okay. The way it's going now, I mean, with the new coach that I've invested myself in, right, into right, is making my mind work ways that I didn't think I would be thinking. You know, scalability processes, yeah, even simple things like how do we gain traffic from? How do we get leads? How do right. we show people or get people interested in what we're doing? And how do we take those people and have conversations with them? That's the thing. Get the leads, have the conversations, create sales. Yeah. Yes. That, so that's it. So I had to invest in appointment setters. I had to invest in closers, uh-huh. you know, hiring more coaches. Right. Organizing where, you know, um, I'm training my director now to be a COO. Right. Um, handle operations and all the processes. Uh, two head coaches that we got that we're working on training up. So 
Because once again, my value is building relationships like this. Yeah. You know, my yeah. value is not working hands on in the business. Now, I, I still take some closing calls right now until we get the second closer up and, and ready. Right. And, but you got to do what you got to do in the business. You're growing it. You are everything right now. Yep. Right. So, and it's, it's okay, right? It's okay to be working in your business, but have a plan to scale and don't be afraid to hire people. And we understand people are not going to do it how you're going to do it because yeah. it's not their business, yeah. but have a process in place Yeah. because I had a gentleman I was talking to, he owns a, a clothing store and I said, look, what does your process look like from when a customer gets to, in the door to where you ching ching at the cash register? What is right. that process? And we created a four step process. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, now when you hire people to be in the store, you got a four step process. And when a customer comes in the door, so what they're going to do until that customer chichings or if they leave without buying something, what does that process look like for them as well? Right. Right. Yeah. So hire those people, show them the process because then you can hold them accountable. You can do KPIs and hold them accountable for doing things the way you want them to do it. Yeah. You cannot have a process and hire people and get mad if they don't know about something that they're doing wrong. Yes. You didn't tell them. You didn't right. have a process. Right. So you can't fire people and say he was no good. He didn't know you expected it like this. He can't read your mind or she yeah. can't read your mind. So don't be afraid to invest in people. Don't be afraid to let them have ownership over something that you've had ownership over. That's the hardest part. For me, the process is getting that stuff straight. That was hard for me when I'm growing my real estate biz. But the easy part for me was kind of like, I think I, I it's kind of a fault of mine is I, I let go too soon, right? I let mm. go and, I, and you know, I'm like, you got it. Let's, you got it. That's not like me. <laughs> <laughs> and so like some people are like micro, like, oh, you got to do this, got to do this, got to do this and let, and, and don't more hands on and don't let them go. But I'm on the back end going, yeah, this is that. You got this. This is got it figured out. You know, and like that's kind of how I am. And I know a lot of people aren't like me, and because of of the conversations that I have with individuals, and it's it, it's maybe I'm just unique. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is what it is. So, so your birthday is in January, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're Capricorn. Yeah, yeah. I think we we think different, bro. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, so when people say like we 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 have our mind on the go, like we have a certain and we have a certain life that we want to live mm-hmm. and we know what it takes to get there. And if we don't know what it takes to get there, we pretty much know yeah. what we need to do to learn. Right. Yeah. And and I'm not saying sign versus sign for everybody out there that's right, listening. right, right. But what I think what me and Kyle are so sort of like is we're not afraid to go out there and get it. You can't be afraid to go out there and get it. It's going to be conversations that you're going to have to have that's going to scare you shitless. Yep. But yep. you need to have the conversations, whether it's with somebody that's doing numbers that you can never, you didn't fathom that you would do and you're just so nervous, have the conversation because then you're going to be the person giving that knowledge to somebody that's going to be super nervous talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. It, it just flows down. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I hope this was valuable. <laughs> Man, no, dude, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you for coming on here and sharing like this story and this the the transformation of everything. And it's not so much transformation, it's transformation in, in different industries, but it's the stacking of the skills that you took from the musician to the payday lending and just wanting to help people. And and like it seems like you've always just wanted to do that and connect with individuals to the clothing to the bb and and now, now doing this and then building your company. So I feel like this is something that's just been like right up your alley from day one. And you've always, so you've, I mean, even the high school, even before high school, I mean, me and you re- rode the same bus together pro- in middle school, right. yeah, you know? Sure. Yep. And so just to see this, this progress, but you were always kind of like the guy that had something going on. You really, I mean, if I were to look <laughs> back, you always had something going on, right? I mean, yeah, you did. I'll try to get, I'll try to, <laughs> you know, I had dreams. I was like, man, I try to be on TV. I try to do all, you know, it's right. just one of those things where I'm like, whatever it takes, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. just, I appreciate you coming on and sharing this with us, man. I think it'll help a lot of people. So how, if somebody want to connect with you, how do they find you? Levelupintech.com 
on LinkedIn, um, LinkedIn forward slash IN forward slash level up broadest. Mr. Level Up in Tech on Instagram and Twitter. We okay. have a Level Up in Tech Facebook group. You can check it out. Facebook group. I mean, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Level Up in Tech. We're just here. We got a community that we just want to, you know, if you want to come and learn how to be successful on your own terms in tech and just take information and just give it value. I mean, give value to your own self. We're here to do that. But if you're looking, you know, for something that you always had an interest in tech and you want to be able to be useful and be an asset to a company in, in six months and land a high paying role, that's what we specialize in. We specialize in taking people with no technical background to moving them to a cloud role in six months. So check us out, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Awesome. I love it. Before we leave, the one thing that you could share with somebody that like, if you were to go back and just say, hey, you could share one key aspect of your life that you could put. What would you tell your son? I'll tell my son, <laughs> this is just what I believe. Uh, trust your gut in situations. When your gut tells you something, I think that's God talking to you, right? Yeah. It, it, business deals, hanging with friends, who a person is that you believe deep down inside. If I would have trust my gut more, I think I would have been way farther ahead as a teenager, as a young adult. Now, right. don't don't get me wrong. I believe everything I went through led me to this point. But right. I think my experiences could have been better if I just trusted my gut, right? If I had trusted my gut, I wouldn't have lost right. that huge amount of money. I should have just used him and used a couple of other people to do the job, and I would have been successful in that. So yeah. whatever your gut tells you to do, if you've been thinking about starting that business, but your mind is giving you all this imposter syndrome and fear and anxiety about doing it, but your gut tells you this is a problem that I think I could solve in the community, or this is something I really think is going to be of value, right. start, do it. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to have analysis paralysis to try to research and analyze every single thing before you start. Just take action because what you don't want is you could be on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and have somebody present a business that they just created and that shit is just like yours. Yeah. Because you took too long. <laughs> facts. <laughs> Golly, those are facts. Man. Again, broadest man, I appreciate you jumping on with us today. I thought you brought the fire. And um, guys, if you if you want to level up in tech, yes. hit, hit brought us up. I appreciate right. it, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. This is the podcastfactory.com.